Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just finished going over the uh, NHL playoffs, the Rangers falling to the Panthers 3-2 to uh, to fall to a 3-2 series hole in that uh, in that ever-important semifinal series. We talked about the implication of the Mavericks advancing to the NBA Finals, taking on the Celtics, uh, where the Minnesota Timberwolves will go from here, and about the game from last night in our first three segments. We are going to finish off our show today, though, talking about the MLB. Uh, We haven't done power rankings in about two weeks, so we are going to do our our updated sports by GSMC podcast network uh, power rankings. Uh, So that's coming up in just a second. But before we get to them, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you have a burning question about sports, anything at all, go ahead and throw that in the comments. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate all of you for sticking around and talking some sports with me on a beautiful Friday afternoon. Uh, But like I was saying... We're going to do some MLB Power Rankings, and right here, we've got our uh, MLB Power Rankings updated to today. Uh, very simply, we'll start at the bottom, as we usually do. Uh, the bottom doesn't have too many changes. Uh, overall, I switched the uh, White Sox and the Marlins. The White Sox still have the worst record in baseball. The Marlins, while they are not good at all, have been slightly better. Injuries really have been that derailing factor for them, uh, and being able to, you know, get some of their guys back should make them a better team. I bumped them above the, above the White Sox. I think they win a head-to-head, but it is, it is close there at the bottom. No change, 28 to 26. Rockies, Angels, Athletics, all have been pretty bad. <laughs> They've all been really bad. Uh, I think the Cardinals moving up, uh, I have the Pirates here at 25. The Cardinals moving up is more of a factor in them moving down than it is anything else. Paul Skeen's arrival uh, really has been an awakening for them. Having Paul Skeen's come up is... You, in general, they probably should have moved up, but they the rest of that team is still bad. They're great on Paul Skeen's day, and it's much watched television when he is pitching. Just the stuff that he's done through his first four starts in the MLB, uh, throwing a no hitter in one of them. He only went six innings, but six hit, six, six innings of no hit baseball uh, is insane. He's striking everybody out under the sun, and he's going to be an elite elite pitcher for a long time in the MLB. So that's very exciting for the Pirates. The Mets down at 24. They had a whole situation yesterday with Jorge Lopez. Uh, They made some more cuts today. Now, uh, Jorge Lopez situation isn't the main reason why they fell. They've also just been awful uh, in the last couple of weeks. You look at their, uh, you look at their, at their, uh, at their last 10, uh, they're two and eight in their last ten games, and that is, if for a team that was already struggling, they're now behind the Washington Nationals, who I have at twenty three, by three and a half games in that division. They might, they're probably going to be sellers at the deadline. So we'll see what happens with, excuse me, with the New York Mets as a uh, as time continues. If they can turn this around, because they do have some pieces that. Plenty of contenders would be very, very excited to get their hands on if they're up for sale in this offseason. But 23, we got the Nationals. They've been average. They're a bad team. Six and four over their last 10. Their run differential for the season is just about as close to zero as it can be. They're at negative nine, so not as close as, as not the closest in the league, but single digits. They've been kind of, they've been kind of average. The emergence of some of their young guys keeps them in that upper echelon of bad teams, uh, but they're still, they're still in that tier of bad teams. I talked about the Cardinals. 
they've been on a bit of a hot stretch. They're 8-2 and two in their last 10. They move up to 22 here in my rankings, up three spots. Uh, they're kind of in contention for that division. They've passed the Cubs, who, while they are eight and well, well, the well, they're eight and two. The Cardinals are the Cubs, who I have falling eight spots. They're actually the biggest fallers, or yeah, they're the they're the they're the second biggest fallers. I didn't update the uh, the Reds. That's my fault. They uh they stayed where they were. The Reds are exactly where they were last week, uh, but. The, the Cubs are the biggest fallers. They fall from 7 down to 15. I still believe in this team. They're a good team. They've fallen below 500, and that's because of this stretch. Actually, in the last uh, in the last 26 games, they have the same record as the Chicago White Sox, which is not something you want to have. You don't really want to uh, connect yourself with the White Sox organization right now. The Reds at 21, like I said, they were there last week. Uh, ignore the minus 10. It should be plus zero. Uh, they just, I thought this Reds team would be really good, but there they are sitting last in their division. It's been a relatively solid division, surprisingly. No one in that division has been bad. They're a game and a half behind Pittsburgh. I do believe in the young talent of this team. I think that they can turn it on. Ellie De La Cruz has been a lot of fun to watch, and I think the young pitching will step it up soon. Uh, I think they're getting a little bit of bad luck, but uh, I, I still, I'm still a believer in this Reds team. Uh, a team I'm not a believer in is at number twenty, and that's the Blue Jays. And I'm, I'm a big Blue Jays supporter. Uh, I, 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 I like their team a little bit, but they, I, I am off the bandwagon. They have just, they just look lethargic, really out there. They kind of look old, and I know they're not really that old. But they're most likely going to be sellers at the deadline. They probably should blow it up. Vlad Guerrero hasn't been the same in the last couple seasons since he almost won his MVP back in 2021. Uh, Bo Bichette has been great, but he's probably gone. Uh, the Blue Jays kind of they they took their swing and they missed, and unfortunately they uh, they're they're not going to hit those same heights that they were at before. Uh, at number 19, I have the Detroit Tigers. Uh, the Tigers, who in an, in a pretty solid AL Central, uh, you know, they are 500. They're trailing the Guardians, the Royals, and the Twins, who I all have in my top 10. So it's been a really solid division up there. Uh, Detroit at 500. It's really... <laughs> Everyone is kind of close in that division besides the Chicago White Sox, who are down there with the worst record in all of baseball. Uh, but the Tigers, after that hot start, just kind of have been they've been really cooling off. They haven't been great. They've got some great pitching, uh, but their batting hasn't their, their their hitting hasn't quite been able to keep up with that level that we that we uh that they showed at the beginning of the season. Uh, at number eighteen, I've got the Diamondbacks. Uh, who have had a really disappointing season after making a run to the uh, World Series last season. I still think they'll be able to turn it around, uh, but their pitching has not been there, which is a little bit of a concern. The Astros at 17, they just continue to climb. Third in their division now, five and a half games back of the lead. They're still under 500, but they're starting to go back to the Astros we know. They, they're they're within striking distance of that division lead now. Rays at uh, at 16, again, kind of the same situation with the Blue Jays. Uh, they've lost that voodoo magic that they had. They're 3-7 and seven in their last 10, and they just have not looked like the Rays team that we, know, uh, that, we, that we know they are. We talked about the Cubs already. They're at 15. I've got the Red Sox at 14. They're just so average. Like, when they're good, they're 500. When they're bad, they're 500. And they're just so average. You got to put them right in the middle. So I've got them there at 14 on my list. Uh, <clears throat> Rangers at 13. They have been better. Uh, still not great, but they're getting better. The bats are starting to wake up. The Giants, on the other hand, who I have at 12, are the biggest risers in my uh in my mock draft they are seven and three in their last ten they've jumped uh to second they're tied for second in that division with the padres who i have just one spot ahead of them at 11 uh they've figured it out uh they they were really struggling it seemed like a lot of their additions weren't working out but they've gone on a little a little run here uh and they are they are back 
uh, back to where they kind of wanted to be at the beginning of this season. Padres, I have at 11. I just believe in their high-end talent a little bit more than the Giants. I don't really believe they're a great... They, they have the potential to be a great team. I just don't think they're there yet. Uh, now we hit a couple of those AL Centrals. 10, top 10. I've got the Twins at 10 and the Royals at 9. I'm a big fan of this Royals team. I love the combination of uh, Brady Singer and Cole Reagans at the top of that rotation. And uh, Salvi Perez is having himself a nice little resurgent season after a little bit of a down slump last year. Bobby Witt is in MVP conversations. They did a great extending him before the season, before he really uh, showed up to the national stage. The Mariners have just been solid all season. They're not making any kind of crazy push at eight. Uh, the Brewers have been surprisingly good, even with even with injuries to some of their top guys. They've been good. They really the, all of the central divisions have. Uh, the Braves, uh, they fall, they fall from uh, they fall all the way down to six. I think minus one is wrong. I'm pretty sure I had the Yankees at five before, but uh, the Braves fall. I think I think they were at three before. Anyway. Uh, the Braves fall from three to six, uh, and that is because of the Acuna injury. Six is still really good after having lost your two best players in the in in your in your uh, on your team. But uh, finishing up the top five, the Guardians who have figured out how to hit again. J Ram is there, and that bullpen is elite. The Orioles who kind of have a super team. The Dodgers who have a super team. The Orioles who have Gunnar Henderson. Uh, who is another MVP, young MVP candidate, and they've got a lot of youngsters coming up from Norfolk. Uh, the Dodgers, uh, just Shohei Otani and Mookie Betts. I don't think I need to say more. The Yankees at two, uh, their pitching staff, even without Garrett Cole, has been maybe the best in the entire league. And then you add Juan Soto to that lineup, and they have been awesome. And rounding it out at number one, I have the Philadelphia Phillies. Bats are starting to show up. And that's the scary part. They have a plus 93 run differential. Nobody else in in the entirety of the MLB other than the Yankees uh, is even close. The, the Yankees have plus 97. Uh, but uh, the Phillies and the Yankees both have uh, both have very similarly built. They both have some of the best rotations in the entire in the entire uh, sport. And their bats, uh, they have like two guys that are powering them. Uh, but anyway, those are my power rankings. Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, but we are going to, uh, end our show today. Thank you everybody so much for tuning in to today's episode of sports by GSMC podcast network. I've been your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Appreciate all of you for sticking around and talking sports with me today. We'll be back on Monday, same time, same place. You all have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend, and I will see you then. Bye-bye. Let's go.